have a win that they want to share. Maybe they got their first client. I see a lot of you guys got your first client. Who wants to mention it in the chat maybe? Or if you're brave, tell us on video. I saw Urban, you made your video yesterday. Good job. Yeah, I have something to share. It is yeah. Really it. Yeah, I got my uh, first digital plumbing uh, client over this week. Um, it was great. Uh, just in one of the groups that I was in, they were talking about some of the connections and reached out to them and uh, we moved forward. So yeah, that was a good win. Good job. Dr. Jordan is going to become our next John Cordray. That's right. Absolutely. And there's going to be a lot of John Cordrays. Who here is new to this group? Never been here before, here the first time. Let me know in the chat. Say new in the chat if you're brand new. I want to know who you are. Don't worry, we're not going to spam you or ask you for money. Eugene, Christy, Steven, I know you've been here many times. Steve, we've got a lot of Steves. Steve Roman. Good looking crew, Sheldon. Evan, all right. Who here has been to at least five sessions? Tell me how many sessions have you been to? Give me a number, estimate if you're not quite sure how many. Mr. Mike, are you a dancer? Market pie, I like that. A dozen or more says Bruce, all but one. Seven says Angelica, most of them says Timothy. Oh man, okay. So for those of you who are new, the reason why we're here with Conquer Local Think Tank is to help you start, grow, and scale your agency. We're here to serve local businesses. These are people that are in the yellow pages. They have a location, dentists, doctors, lawyers, plumbers, roofing. And we know that through our system, we can not only bring on these guys as clients, which is usually the number one issue we hear, but also deliver results for these clients so that we can continue to maintain them and retain them on an ongoing basis by showing that we are driving them more business. Oh, Anthony, sorry I have to work in the background for this session, but I'm listening. And if you're catching this on the replay, congratulations. I would ask you to go back through all the previous sessions. I think we have 22 of them and go through them sequentially. So you don't want to skip, even though you might be tempted to say, I'm just gonna go to the most recent one. You wanna go back because everything that we have builds upon one another. For example, building a lighthouse, being able to record your why videos, being able to put that into a funnel, being able to say thank you, being able to role play. So today we are in between season one and season two, and we're gonna focus on role playing. Role playing is where we will go back and forth and take turns being either the prospect or being the agency owner. And the feedback that I've gotten from hundreds of agency owners is that this is the most powerful skill that you can learn in being able to not only close a client, but being able to troubleshoot when there's an issue and being able to communicate. Because most of the time, it's a communication issue and it's not a performance issue. That's the good news here. So, hey everybody, tell me, where are you coming in from today? Let me know, type into the chat. Where are you coming from? Miami, haha, <laughs> Madison, Wisconsin. Awesome. Zambia, wow, that is a long way. LA, I'm gonna be in LA in a couple days. We're filming a thing with Jake Paul. I love the beard. You look the most interesting man. Buddy, Alex, hey, Alex. How you doing? It's cutting off. I can't hear you really well, Dennis, but uh, nice seeing you. No? <laughs> Nor can I mean, I could just start talking and maybe entertain the troops, but probably not as <laughs> what everyone's here for.
Go for it. <laughs> yeah, be entertaining right on the spot. Yeah, that's what will happen. I don't know. Go, guys. Mike, you can do it. <laughs> I'm just in a fantastic mood right now. The sun is still shining. Got a roof over my head. And uh, there's not much to be unhappy about right now. Who else is positive? Cool. Hey, I'm positive. I'm always positive. Steven's positive. Yeah. I'm, getting my, I'm getting my very first house uh, next in the next month, so that's why. Oh, Dennis is back. I'll hey, nice. I'm out and about. <laughs> For our Canadian friends, I'll still say happy Fourth. All sure. right, you guys, you guys ready to do some role playing? Give me, a, give me a yes or a heck yes. And if you want to volunteer to be role playing, let me know here in the comments. And I'll start to pick you guys and we'll go back and forth. Jeff, Malcolm. All right. Any of you guys who are <clears throat> Vendasta partners on the starter tier or above will get preference here, just to be fair, right? For the people. But everyone, if, even if you're not a Vendasta partner and you're not on one of the programs, you can still be here and still learn. This program is free for you guys to attend on these weekly calls. But why don't we give, I'm going to give preference to the folks who are Vendasta partners. So if you're a Vendasta partner, say partner and say role play, and then we're gonna go back and forth. You guys are gonna have a lot of fun. This is how you're able to close deals. And just to show you that we are not here to mess around and make stuff up. In the last four days, I've closed personally three deals at $10,000, cold calls. These are people I have never met before. I don't know who they are, they wanted to meet, I got them on the phone, and in the first call, I closed them. And not only did I close these deals, because you can close deals that are nightmare clients, these are people you don't want, right? But I closed them the right way, set the right expectations, I didn't make any kind of promises that are ridiculous, right? All right, so let's start with Stephen Kelsch. So unmute yourself, there you are, you win! Dun, 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 dun. You know, it's like the okay. price is right. I walk down to the front. Okay, so we're going to do this in two or three minutes. Do you want to be the attorney or do you want to be the agency? I'll be the agency. Okay. Steven, I heard good things about you. I've been watching your videos on Facebook and YouTube. I'm a personal injury attorney. And Okay. Um... Hey, Dennis, uh, it was nice uh, talking with you. Listen, um, I want to tell you that uh, we really need to take a look at your uh, digital plumbing. And the reason that we need to do that is we need to make sure that your foundation is all together. Are you okay with that? I can't hear you. I am, but you've started to make recommendations before you've heard my problem. Oh, I couldn't hear you. Your, your audio went out. So I'm having I'm having an internet connection issue. Yes, this is my phone. I'm gonna I'm gonna come in through this phone instead. All right, give me a sec. Okay. Unmute out here. Okay, so let's start over. You ready? No. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay, how about now? Okay, all right, okay. So let's start again, let's just start from the top. Okay, so Stephen. I've heard a lot, I've seen your videos on Facebook and I'm a personal injury attorney and I don't really understand marketing. I've hired other agencies, but I don't really understand the ROI of what's going on. I have paid all this money to get my website built. I've hired someone to post things on social media, but I really don't understand you know, what I need to do to generate more leads and whether my marketing is working for me. Can you help? Yeah, uh, Dennis, really, uh, thanks for uh, getting in touch with me. I really appreciate that. You know, um, I'm going to tell you, Dennis, I think that 
to in order to really start, you know, with any type of a situation, you know, you really need to have your research going. And that's kind of like where I want to start to kind of like get a feel for what's working, what's not working. And then that way we can diagnose exactly what's going on with you and your firm. Are you okay, okay. with that? I don't know whether you understand the question I'm asking. I've hired a bunch of marketers. I've paid a lot of money for random things. I have no idea of the ROI that's happening. And can you help me with that? I'm a personal injury attorney. I'm good at that, but I don't understand the ROI of my marketing. There's a lot of agencies out there that are selling me lots of things. And frankly, I don't know who, who to trust. Well, in order to be able to figure out your ROI, uh, we need to like check out to see if your analytics are hooked up properly in order to be able to measure. The only way you can really measure ROI is to see if, if uh, you have your analytics in order to be able to tell how many calls you're getting and what's the percentage of the people that actually become a client. Okay, I don't understand anything about analytics. I know if the phone rings and I know, you know, generally maybe where they came from because someone will say, hey, how'd you hear about us? But I'm a personal injury attorney. I don't want to learn how to use Google Analytics and all these other tools. I just want to know that of any marketing that I'm running or any activity I have that's generating more business for me. Well, take a look at it like this way, Dennis. It's like, let's say that like your phone ends up ringing like uh, 10 times. And out of those 10 times, one person uh, will become a, a client. So the thing that is, is that we want to measure that in order to be able to tell you what your ROI is. That's a process that we provide. That's not a process for you to even learn. Okay. So tell me, what does that process look like? The way that it works is that uh, we, we, we like, let's, let's say that you want to get your phone to ring. So what we would do is we would be able to measure the calls that are coming in on your phone and figure out how many of those you're actually closing. And then that way we can actually measure what your return on investment would be. Are you still there? Hello. Perhaps he's trying to reconnect now <laughs> to his, uh, his laptop. Well, that, okay. now wait a minute. Let's get together and we can hook up the ROI right. for him. We'll have that all together for him. Give him a report by the time he gets back online. What do you think? Yeah. New, new studio setup. So here's, look at this. One, two, camera two is pointed at the whiteboard, Dan Pasker. Camera three, we'll go back to camera one. Okay, so how do you think Steven did in this role play? <laughs> What's the R? I have a bad internet connection. Ha ha ha, that's right. <laughs> yeah, not too bad. So you wanna be able to show confidence, but not in a fake sort of way. You wanna be able to say, you want to practice something called active listening, where you're reflecting back what it is they've said. So before you start making recommendations, you have to say, I understand what you're, let me just make sure I understand what you're saying. You've hired a bunch of these agencies. They've made you spend money doing random sorts of things. And you're not really clear on what the ROI is because you're a personal injury attorney and you're trying to drive leads. And then when you hear them say, yes, that's right then you have the ability to come in and make a recommendation. Okay. You follow me on that? So that's yeah. the first thing you have to do. The number one mistake that I see with people in that initial consultation is they're so eager to make a recommendation that they don't build rapport and they don't first demonstrate through something called active listening that they understand what the issue is. And instead of just saying, I understand, what you wanna say is, let me make sure I have this right. You're saying this, this, and this, is that right? And when they say yes, then you can provide some analysis against it, and then you can provide a recommendation. So we call this metrics analysis action. You follow me on that? So that's what you want to do. Active listening. Let me know in the, in the chat here. Have you guys heard of active listening? Which is, and you heard of the difference between 
listening to respond versus listening to understand. You want to listen to understand. If you're so busy trying to come up with the next thing that you're going to say, you are not listening to them and they are not going to buy from you because they don't feel like you guys are on the same page. Yeah. Okay. Now let's see who else do we have. So good job, Stephen. Keep practicing this. You'll have more and more opportunities to do this. Let's go to Renee Gray. Unmute yourself and say hi. Hi there. Hello. Okay, there you are. Hey, Renee. All right, are you going to be the client or the agency? Um, I'll be the client this time. The client. Okay. At Lighthouse is hardware store owners. Hardware store owners. Okay, good. So come at me. So, Dennis, we have spent a lot of, bought a lot of marketing programs and digital programs from corporate companies and just really haven't gotten anywhere. We're not sure, you know, if it's money well spent. So tell me more about the pain that you have. What kinds of money have you spent so we can start to diagnose what's going on in your situation? Sure. Well, so we're um, a branded hardware store, but we have control over our local marketing dollars. Okay. But, um, and have participated in some of the national programs uh -huh. um, to the tune of seven to $1,200 a month. And they tell us that it drives more traffic, but uh -huh. we're just not sure. Okay. So you're using the, the co-marketing dollars that you're getting from corporate because you're a branded hardware store. Tell me about some of the other efforts that you've initiated to try to drive more people into your store. So we are doing some uh, social media. We are doing some things on Google My Business uh -huh. and some email marketing. And okay. we also have a loyalty program. Okay. So we know um, about 60% of our customers who shop our store. 60% are loyalty customers? Mm -hmm. Wow, that is fantastic. And to what degree are you able to track that in terms of, for example, custom audiences, if, if you use those to tie that to your Google and your Facebook and see what the ROI is of these loyal customers that keep coming back? Yeah, so corporate says that they're doing that. Like I said, we're just not sure if they are. We okay. would like to be able to do that ourselves and actually target a little bit more locally, uh -huh. but we just haven't been able to do it outside ourselves. Okay. And you say that you have social media and you're doing some of these other digital activities. Tell me about the team that's doing that work. Is it you? Is it freelancers? Is it people on, on site, people in, in the store when they have free time? We're trying to manage it ourselves. So quite honestly, it's not consistent. You know, we're hardware store owners. You know, okay. it's, it's just one more thing that we have to do. Okay. How far have you or your team gone into your Google My Business to see how well you rank and see how much traffic you're getting? Uh, we do look at our insights and see, you know, how up, how, um, how many visits and stuff like that that we're getting. Unfortunately, we don't have access to our Google My Business uh, or our Google Analytics page since we have a corporate website. Oh, because it's through corporate and probably the same thing on social too, where you have the, the main brand and then you're one of the, the children underneath. So you don't really have access. Well, to we have our own Facebook pages and stuff like that. We okay. just use the corporate website program right now. Okay. And so for the corporate branded programs, are they allowing you to spend that seven to 12% the way you want, or do you have to use their vendors or are they spending the money for you? So we can do any of the above. We can use their program or we can use our own ad dollars locally. However, we want to spend it. Okay. So Renee, you mentioned that, you're not really sure how well your marketing is working. And I would love to give you all kinds of recommendations. I would love to give you training on that, all that. But before, what I'd like to do with your permission is run an audit across your search, across your social, across things that we can evaluate, even if we don't have access to your GMB. Is that something you might be interested in? Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. So what's gonna happen now is we're gonna use your name, address, and phone, and we're gonna look across all your social properties, look at your website, look at how you rank in local or hardware store in city name. There's six different factors that we're going to cover. Give our team about 72 hours to be able to collect all this data, and then we can schedule a time to go over that, and then think about specific things that we can do based on your data. Does that sound good? 
That sounds great. Fantastic. I have your phone and I have your email. Look forward to hearing back from me in seven, two hours. Okay, perfect. Okay. Thanks, Dennis. All right. So what do you guys think? See how easy it is? We're just having a conversation. I'm not selling. I want to get that snapshot report in, but I first have to demonstrate some level of understanding. I happen to have written multiple reports for the International Hardware Retailing Federation or something like that for hardware The NRHA. Stores. Yeah, whatever they are. Like, I get called up all the time by the media. Like I was in USA Today a couple days ago, right? And uh, for CBC too as well for our Canadian friends, which is like the big CNN of Canada. So I'm happy to give you leads on that and even modify the existing articles for the independent national hardware retailers. Oh, that'd We've be got awesome. connections in all those places. Okay, so great job, Renee. Let's see who else we have. Mike of Market Pie. So introduce yourself, say your vertical, and tell me, do you want to be the client or the agency? Uh, I'm going to, uh, the vertical that I do is, is it's uh, for people, for, it's for businesses, organizations that are growing uh, their people and uh, their community. So I, I don't have a specific, specific lighthouse yet, um, but it's for people that have that sort of mindset I do really, really well with. And I can be the agency. Okay, you're the agency. So what is, I need to understand more about the client, who they are. Give me a couple examples real quick. Uh, so basically, uh, I, I helped uh, local hospitals. I've helped organizations. Uh, I've, I've helped lots of people that are into like kind of the coaching, coaching space, uh, lots of local businesses. And, but it's more, again, the type of people that are thinking about their community. They're people that are really engaged in their community. Uh, they're people that are taking care of their people. And that's about as close to the lightest house as I can get because those are the sort of people that are thinking about growth and they're thinking about the growth of something bigger than just their business. Okay, so what is the ROI on that? How do, you, how do they measure that? How do they measure that? Well, they, they have to grow their business, obviously. If they don't have a business that's scalable and thriving, then their community's not thriving because these are people that are really connected to their community and doing big things in the community. Okay, so we need to be more specific. So maybe we'll say a hospital? And they want to get more patients. Uh, let's, let's say even financial companies. I have a couple of those ones, and they are very connected with their communities. Like, like what? Like, give me something more specific. Uh, financial planners. Uh, yeah, financial planners. Okay. So, wait. So I'm the financial planner, or no? You're the agent. Who, who's who? I'll I'll be the agency. Uh, okay. <laughs> so I'm are always really. Planner. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Mike, I've been seeing your stuff all over the internet. It looks like you know something about digital marketing. I'm a solo financial planner, you know, or maybe I'm associated with one of the, the larger groups, but I need to generate leads. And I've tried these other lead gen programs where I've paid $500 a month and they're promising me 20 leads per month. And none of that seems to work, but tell me, what can you do for me? Awesome, Dennis. Well, what's, do you know, you've tried a couple programs. I hear you say that, uh, what's been working for you? Well, just good old word of mouth and, you know, I, I sell overfunded life insurance, which is something that people don't really want to talk about. And there's a lot of information that people can get on the internet, but the reason why they talk to me is because of their friends. And there's only so many people though that I can talk to. And especially with COVID-19, my ability to meet people in person has significantly gone down. Yeah. So the word of mouth, it's a great way to start a business. It's a great way to get your foot in the door of things, but what's, what's been stopping you from just relying on the word of mouth? Why not just kind of continue building your, your already successful word of mouth business? Well, I don't know how to do that. I mean, these word of mouth relies upon inbound marketing, people talking about me and I can't force people to talk about me. And I don't want to be that irritating sort of person that says, Hey, tell your friends who want overfunded life or need life insurance or have extra money they're trying to protect from taxes to be able to come contact me. That just, that doesn't feel right to me. All right. So business has been growing well, but the word of mouth is just not getting you uh, at the speed that maybe that you're trying to reach at. Well, my business has hurt badly in the last three or four months because of COVID. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm a small business. It's just me. I have sometimes people that I hire part-time to assist me on marketing sorts of activities, mm -hmm. but I, I need more leads. The leads that I have gotten have been through word of mouth. All these other online marketing activities, like I paid this dude $5,000 to build a website. I hired this PR person that promised to do all this lead gen. I tried the Valpac thing where 
you have the, the mailers, but that didn't really seem to work for me. No, and I, I hear that. Uh, I, I think it's, a, I've been in down that path too, where you always have a lot of people just trying to sell you on different products and tools, but marketing, I think you are the mark, you are your marketing, you are your brand. Uh, this is a really condensed version, but uh, I, I really think that uh, if we want to be able, because if the word of mouth is not getting you the, at the speed you're looking for, I think we really have to figure out and quantify how people actually buy from you, what it is about you, that what's that special sauce that is you, and how can we potentially replicate that? And it's a really simple process. Uh, we have, I prefer to make things data-driven where we look at what you're doing right now. Uh, but yeah, I, I really think we need to get a way of getting you out of doing marketing every single day and get you to being at a place where you can start scaling that business. Uh, do you, uh, yeah, <laughs> sorry from here. I'm, I usually okay. don't just jump right in, All so right. I'm a little stuck. Okay. <laughs> so you were trying to move into a close or move into a recommendation. Yeah. And it doesn't feel, Not didn't, didn't feel. You were close because mm -hmm. you started to say, what is it about these customers or tell me about your niche or. Let's go further in the word of mouth. So you're close. So you would have said, what you could have said is, tell me more about the kinds of customers that you have. And I would have said something like, well, I deal primarily with entrepreneurs who have sold their business and they're trying to pass it down to their family members, but they want to protect things like taxes and inheritance and other issues. And I deal with a lot of entrepreneurs and, and you know, entrepreneurs that, that are in their 50s plus, they love talking to me because I understand what those issues are because that's my background as well. Yeah. And you say, yeah, fantastic. So let's talk more about who these other folks are, where might we reach them? What, may, let's look for examples where you've shared this kind of knowledge in the past. Maybe you've spoken, maybe you've written some blog posts. Let's get that out there because we want to throw fuel on the fire. Whatever's mm -hmm. working, we want to get more out of what's already working. We don't want to have to come up with these new ideas that may or may not work. That's risky because you're a solo entrepreneur you're not a mega corporation you can't afford to spend lots of money doing lots of random things right you said you don't have a big team it's just you let's make sure that every dollar is working hard and before we make any kind of recommendation we want to do that analysis to understand what are those ingredients and we know that with whether it's online marketing or offline marketing or any kind of marketing it's always the content and the target and the intersection of those is called relevancy if we can figure out who your audience is and what content's resonated with them, then digital marketing is a paint by the numbers affair. Does that sound right? Does that make mm -hmm. sense to you? 100%. It's not witchcraft. It's not about tools and technology, even though we have lots of tools and technology, right? So you got to establish rapport before you got to demonstrate analysis and demonstrate you understand what they're talking about. Understand, like re repeat back to them that you understand who they are. Then you're able to make a recommendation or, you know, talk more about their situation and make a recommendation. So we call that metrics analysis action. Okay. Good job. All right. How about Malcolm Stone? You know the drill. And next on deck, Eugene, or no, wait, it's, yeah, Eugene Oliva. But first, I, do, I do know the drill. All right. Okay. So, so Dennis, uh, just, just for clarification, I have a few lighthouses. What I mean is I have a service niche, so it's reputation management. Yep. And then I also, uh, for my vertical lighthouse, uh, I'm going after home services. Okay. Um, so that's, what, what else do we need? Oh, and I'll, and I'll, I'll be, to, I'll make it, uh, I'll, I'll, be the, I'll be the agency. The agency? Okay. So I'm going to give you a real lead that I just closed three days ago. So Malcolm, I'm Brian, and... I run a home services company. In fact, I do roofing and power washing. And my business is 1.7 million per year. I'm trying to grow to 10 million. I've got a videographer who is an unemployed wedding photographer that I've got to make a bunch of these videos. I started a YouTube channel. I've already gotten 1300 views in the last couple of weeks. And I've got an, another person that is helping me part time on marketing. What do I need to do, Malcolm? to get from 1.7 million to 10 million. I've been doing this for 30 years. I understand this business inside and out. How do you hire techs? How do you actually do the work? And marketing just through good word of mouth and a little bit of organic, because I've got A plus power washing. That's been working for me, but I don't know what I don't know. So what should I do, Malcolm? 
So, so Dennis, you know, you, you've come to me and, and I, what I, the first thing I want to find out is, are you aware of what people are saying about you online? Do you have any idea, for, for instance, do, are you aware of what people are saying about you in your reviews? Yeah, or? it's huge for us. That, that's probably the main thing that drives our organic and we've got 700 plus five star reviews. Okay. Across Google and Yelp, <coughs> excuse me. We even have the Better Business Bureau, which I don't really care much about, but we're A, A plus rated there. So <clears throat> we know that reviews are critical for us, okay. but obviously we want more reviews because we know more reviews drives us more business. Right. Well, tell me a little bit about what, what you know there. I mean, what are you doing with them? You're, you say you're aware of them, but what's, what's happening? You've got a marketing person. <clears throat> what, what are they doing with well, I have, those? I have one person on staff who's always looking at the reviews and we want to make sure that we always respond to them. But there's okay. always more that we can do. And I know that there's tools out there. There's other kinds of programs. Mm -hmm. I just swallowed a bug, by the way. You guys see that? It's a 4K yes. camera, so you probably could even see the kind of bug that I just swallowed. My goodness. No. I think it's the clean water to get around this. Yeah, reviews are important, but I'm sure there's more things that we could do. Well, well, the other, the other idea is that are you, when you, um, when customers, how do customers find you? I mean, are you, do you, are you active on your Google My Business page? Do you have uh, listings in your industry that you post or that you follow and make sure that they're accurate? We have the basics there, but you know, I'm sure that there's, there's more that we can do. I have a marketing person who's gone through a lot of random training on how to do local marketing. You know, just like the way I found the videos that you've been making, your how videos that are informative. So I thought maybe I'll just talk to this guy and see if, if he can maybe help me. Okay. So, so, we, so if you've got a lot of reviews, you're responding to them. What are customers, what's the reaction that you get from customers? Do you have, do you have any negative reviews that you're responding to? Are there any issues there that you're, you're seeing? Oh, there's, I mean, you know, there's always going to be some negative reviews and then we have a process to respond to those negative reviews to turn them into positive reviews. That's why we get so much business because we're 4.9 stars across pretty much everything. Okay. So, so how, if, if you, the person that's doing, doing the monitoring for you now, that marketing person. All right, Malcolm, I'm going to stop you there. Yeah. So you're, you're going down the wrong path by trying to drill me into reviews. I just told you our reviews are doing pretty well. And right. you might say, okay, well, I'm sure, like you said, there's always more things you could do. Certainly we can take a look at that, but what do you see as the biggest issue? So you've gone, you've, no matter what I've said, you've, you've tried to push the review thing. Right. So you want to, open it up a little bit broader. So each time I was saying, look, we got reviews down. We've got it. Like stop going into reviews and you've, you've been going into reviews. Well, wait, well, well, maybe I'm missing something, Dennis, because I mean, my, my niche is review online reputation management. It's just, right. What, what am I, what did I miss? What? So reviews are good, right. but what happens when someone leaves you a good review? What happened? It, most of the time it doesn't go anywhere because you want to collect those reviews and put them out there. Right? Yeah, right. A lot of <clears throat> a lot of reputation management is seen as negative SEO, combating negative results on the first page. But you right. know the best defense is a strong offense. So right. if you amplify the good reviews that are out there, that pushes down the negative things and also helps you from a lead gen standpoint. So great reputation management is the same thing as great lead gen. And thus, <clears throat> I told you my goal was to go from 1.7 million right. to 10 million. The way you do that is take those reviews. Well, there's three or four things. One is take them and cross post them, make a compilation mm. of them, right. <clears throat> feature customers in the blog, right? Don't just take the good reviews that are there on Yelp and Google and what, you know, Angie's list or whatever, but respond to them and create more content with them. Take some of these customers and interview them on zoom and collect their stories. You said you had a videographer. Mm. Well, as part of this, <clears throat> pick a few of these key customers and tell their story, not because it's, <clears throat> it's a testimonial, but because you want to be able to tell the story of their lives and what's going on in, in their business and how they are not their business, but you know, in their home and how they built this amazing patio, like all these things to tell people stories without coming off as a commercial. Right. <clears throat> so when you do that, that's the strongest form of reputation management. Otherwise right. it ends up being tools and negative reviews and trying to overcome them. And that has less value, especially when you hear, the clients say, look, I've already got a pretty good reviews game, mm -hmm. but 
What do I need to do to grow the business? Easy. You take the reviews and turn them into ads. You equip your technicians that are going around and you show them how to use a cell phone. Right. Be able to collect a 15 second video. <clears throat> how much more powerful is it when you're able to collect that video instead of counting on them to, you know, late, you send them an email later and hope that they're going to go online and leave your review. If you train your technicians, like someone who's doing 1.7 million is not doing home services all by himself. He has a, a team of people that go around in trucks. So when you equip these technicians at the moment that they finished doing the power washing of the roof or cleaning the windows and you say, ma'am, I hope you had a good experience. <clears throat> my boss really, really wants a lot of reviews and my pay is tied to the number of reviews that I, I'm able to get. Would you mind if we just made a 15 second video and you, you told me about your experience working with me? Would that be okay? <clears throat> and most of the time they say, okay. And we've taught lots of home service businesses to train their technicians to be able to do that. And then, you know, you train them, hold the phone to the side saying, you know, tell me briefly, you know, how was the service today? How did, how did it make you feel? Oh, it was so great when Malcolm came because he was very professional. He showed up on time and my garage looks great or, you know, whatever it might be. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you say, awesome. Well, how did it make you feel? Is this something you'd recommend to your customers, to your friends? Well, absolutely. I mean, I'm feeling, you know, this is great, blah, blah, blah. And so when you ask them these questions at the moment that you've rendered the service and they're happy, that's absolutely fantastic. Right. 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 But that's the next step of reviews because right. now it's, instead of just negative reputation management stuff, you've turned it into a weapon to drive more sales. Mm -hmm. Right. I, yeah, I think Dennis, I was trying to get a yes. <laughs> I was trying to hear a yes first and I, but, but you're right. I mean, all those things are, are the recommendations, the, the amplifying and, yeah. and collecting so, more and, and continue because people want, not only a lot of reviews, they need to be fresh. They can't be sitting yeah. there for a year. And yeah. so there's lots, obviously you can do there. Yeah. Right. yeah. So the key is with everyone else, and I've done this role playing hundreds of times, even if you're really eager to drive a sale and yes, you want to drive a sale, make sure that you are listening. You must repeat back details to them to show that you are listening because if they think that you're not listening, then you're just a salesperson, right? Right. So good job, Malcolm. All right. How about Ling? All right. We'll move on to David Brown. Yeah, I think I was next, but sure. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. No, my bad. My bad. Go ahead. You're right. You're right, Eugene. Sorry. Yes, yes. Sorry. <laughs> First time here, so sorry. I didn't know. Um, how's it going? Glad to hear. Um, so I guess I have to rate uh, lighthouses is what you guys call it for the niches and stuff. Yep. So um, it's basically, I wrote them down. So military government contractors, veteran owned businesses and veteran focused nonprofits. Cause I'm a okay. Marine vet. So it's kind of like, you know, it's my area in a sense. Great. Have you talked to Wes Foster? I have no impact and no idea who that is. So no. <laughs> talked to He's organizing a bunch of vets and there's a few other vets in this community, which are fantastic. Okay. So are What's you the agency or the client? It's this guy. Hey, what's up? <laughs> I appreciate it. I'll hit you up later. <laughs> uh, sir, go ahead. You were asking? Yep. Are you the agency or the client? Uh, we'll go. I'll be the agency, please. Okay. Mm, so, Eugene, I am a real estate agent. And actually, no, I'm a mortgage broker, right? I'm, okay. Actually, I'll take a real example. So I yeah. run Veterans Lending Group. Can I just tell you something real quick? I own a, a financial services company, so don't put it in financial services because I know that inside and out. So I want something that's going to challenge me, yeah. Oh, so, if you know it inside and out, then let's let's see what pro looks like. Okay. So what? So I run Veterans Lending Group. We have six locations okay. around Seattle, Portland, Texas, and we help veterans get home loans and take advantage of their military benefits. And because of coronavirus, this is a real example, by the way, this is a real client. We have not been able to generate as many leads because we used to have these open houses and these seminars that people would come to our offices and be able to learn. And that's how we drove these leads. But of course, with coronavirus, people are not coming to our location. So we've been trying to switch to webinars, but it's not been as effective. Can you help us? Uh, yes, I can actually. So um, in case you didn't know, I'm a Marine vet. So um, I, I know the area and I know the, your clientele personally. Um, so the way I can help you actually is I have some clients that I uh, that um, had the same problem 
So the way I fixed that is I connected them with uh, nonprofits that have uh, already veterans in their system uh-huh. and uh, basically spread the word out um, who's needing home loans and stuff like that. And then uh, get them on a webinar with Zoom. We've, we use Zoom a lot. Okay. Um, and, and offer those veterans incentives for just for coming on board and listening to your pitch, for example. Um, what kind of incentives? Um, stuff like a, a voucher for a tablet or, a, a, well, once the coronavirus thing dies down, maybe a, a trip for a hotel stay or something like that. Um, just little incentives for them to, you know, to be able to, um, to get their interest, the peak interest, just to attend your, uh, your webinar. Um, and then there you can yeah. pitch them your... Um, Go ahead. Sorry. So the, is that like a timeshare sort of thing? Because why yeah, do I need no. to give out like iPads and stuff and hotel space? No, it's not timeshare. I actually have that. That uh, I used to work at the New York Stock Exchange, so I have that whole hookup. <laughs> so, okay. uh, so then um, I can actually offer those things. Like, yeah. So it helps me a lot with my business. Okay. Um, but what if we don't want to do that? Because that just seems kind of cheesy. Okay. Because um, then it's like whenever you're offering someone an incentive, I'm not. I'm not saying that that tactic doesn't work. But for us, that that seems like we're getting people to sit through a sales pitch instead of them being able to spend time with a fellow veteran and, and share stories. And we're we're equals, right? And there and there's clear value. So I don't have to give you a, a toy to attend, right? That's true. So, so uh, how do I get people to a Zoom webinar? Uh, to a Zoom webinar, uh, like I said, go through the nonprofits. That would be the 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 best way. Um, just hit up. Um, oh, by the way, you're, you're, yeah, you said you're uh, a business, not a nonprofit. So yes, going through um, through each non- nonprofits nowadays for veteran focused ones have a financial services um, person and you know career development and all that. So we can contact okay. those folks. Okay. I'll get you connected with them, and then we can see how it, it'll work with each one individually. And so tell me briefly, how, Eugene, how does that program work? We're we're small. We have six locations. We can't do these big programs, we've got to generate leads and our business is down. So, you know, whatever we're doing has to work, right? Well, um, yes. Uh, okay, so the way it would work is, um, especially with the bigger nonprofits, like um, I'll just say uh, Wounded Warrior Project or something like that, they have different uh, locations in different states and spread out in cities. Yeah. So we would call their headquarters and get them to connect us with the person in the locations where, where your specific offices are at. Okay. And, and bring your clientele that way or bring okay. people to the webinar that way. Okay. So how does this process work? What's it cost? What do you need me to do? Um, <laughs> you kind of threw a wrench at me there. Um, yeah, I have nothing for you right now. I got, you kind of threw me off there with, that, uh, with the cost part. Um, you got to be ready. You got to have your packages. And if you're, now you have a lot of ums, which is okay because you're not a public speaker. But if you have too many ums, and too much stuttering and hesitation, that's going to come off as you're not sure what you're talking about. Got it. So do more role playing and you'll get better. And this is the kind of thing I've been doing it for 30 years and I'm still learning every day. And when you learn how to do this, you will not only close more deals, but you will close the right deals. And it's probably the most powerful skill that you can have. And if you have that, then you have Vendasta on the back end, everything works amazingly. But the last mile problem is you've got to be able to communicate. And this just takes practice. This does not come out of the box. All of us have to learn how to do this, right? We're all beginners. Even if you've been doing it 30 years, you're still a beginner. Even if you're a pro and working with veterans and nonprofits, we're all still beginners, right? The minute we think that we are experts and we know everything, that's the minute we're in trouble. Right. So you never want to think that you got something mastered. Okay. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Yep. Good job. Who's next? All in love. Let's go to Lindrell. And then we'll go to David Brown. And if you don't answer in four or five seconds, we will move to the next one. Okay. Hey, Lindrell, you know, hey. you know, the drill. Yeah. How's it going? Okay, so um, I'll be the I'll be the agency. All right. And I'm working with restaurants. Okay. What kind of restaurants? Let's say I'm working with pizzerias. Pizzerias. Okay. And is it a chain or a mom and pop? 
mom and pop. <clears throat> All right. So I, I own Dennis's Italian Pizzeria, a Chinese guy owning a pizzeria <laughs> in Gilbert, Arizona, which is where I live. And, you know, Lindrell, in the last few months, a lot of restaurants have been hammered and we've been hammered too. We've tried to increase our takeout business. We've tried to have specials. We have our customers leaving us reviews, but it's just not enough because here in our town, we're only allowed to operate at 25% capacity. So even if we're able to get our restaurant full, and even though we're getting more delivery, we're just not making ends meet. And we've used up most of our PPP funds as well. And we're just really in a hard spot. And you know, even before COVID-19 happened, we were in a really difficult business <clears throat> because we don't have the supply chain economics that a Domino's or Papa John's or these other guys have. I mean, we are a premium eatery, so we obviously can charge more, but a lot of people are less likely to spend $30 on a large pizza, especially when the economy is a bit tight and we're not really sure what to do. And we don't want to lay off any more staff. Okay. Okay, and your, and your name, sir? Dennis. Dennis, Dennis is okay. Italian pizzeria in Gilbert. Dennis, okay. Hey, well, I, first of all, Dennis, I appreciate you reaching out to me. Um, it means a lot. How did you hear about us? I think I saw some of your videos on Facebook, and you said oh. that you work with pizzerias. And I thought, well, there's a lot of digital markets out there, but this guy says he focuses on pizzerias, so I'm going to talk to him. Hey, man. Well, I, I certainly appreciate you um, reaching out to me. I appreciate you taking some time with me. And um, so you guys are right now, you're currently um, trying to fight off the COVID-19 uh, and the social distancing and things of that nature. Yeah. And I see, and you said, you mentioned also that um, you're operating at 25% capacity. Is that right? Well, that by law, we can't have more than that inside the restaurant. Okay. Yeah, okay. because we, we've had an outbreak and, you know, they've had to pull things back. Every, okay. Anyone who's who's got anything in Arizona is, can't operate past 25%. Makes sense. Makes sense. I have, I have a, several clients that's, um, that's, you know, they're, they're limited operating on limited occupancy too. Yeah. So right now, uh, what I would say is as far as you mentioned something about your PPC, uh, your budget for what you were spending, you're spending a lot of that up as well. Well, I mean the paycheck protection program, Oh, your paycheck protection. Okay. And you want, and you're, you're trying to keep your employees, uh, at work, uh, working and things of that nature. How long have you been running your operation, Dennis? 25 years. Family awesome. Owned, proud. We were well known in the neighborhood. Awesome. That's awesome. So it's, it seemed like it's a legacy business or something like that. Did you, did yeah. you start the company or? Well, my father <clears throat> actually came over from Milan, Italy. And wow. we opened up this, it's been passed down. We have a long tradition of right. Italian and we make amazing pasta, amazing little garlic knots. Well, you're making me hungry. It's past oh, lunch, but man. <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. And we, we're a family run business. So this okay. is not, you know, Buca di Peppo or Domino's or one of those. And we really care for our customers. Right. And that shows through. And that's why we have a lot of loyalty, but, because our customers are a little older, they're less likely to come to our location. They're not using things like Uber Eats, which is more of a younger generation. So we're having trouble activating and reaching our customers or even going beyond our core customer base to do more takeout. Right. Okay. All right. And so what are, what are you currently doing for uh, marketing right now? Are you on any social networks or are you doing any Google advertising? I think we tried Google a couple months ago and we have one of the girls who's helping us with social media, but really it's just to check that box and, you know, we don't really know what to do and, and spending money on advertising seems like a daunting kind of thing unless we have a plan and we know it's going to work. Yeah, I totally understand. I tell clients that poor advertising is expensive, but good advertising is an investment and you should always be making a minimum uh, what, what we see at least three to five times your ever, uh, advertising spend. It should, and so one thing I want to say, uh, Dennis, first of all, is, man, I appreciate what you do. Um, I think 
I grew up with a um, small, I mean, with a large family and we all met on Sundays and we are so close because we met around the kitchen table. We call it food, fun and fellowship. So yeah. what I, what I like to do is if, uh, if it's okay with you, I'd like to see where you're at. Um, because right now we can kind of talk back and forth, but until I can actually see where you're at as far as your numbers and things of that nature, I can't really give you any any great feedback. Um, let me ask you this. Would it be okay if if I, I can um, actually take a look at where you're at and then maybe next week, well, we have the 4th of July this weekend, so maybe next week we can probably rendezvous back maybe around Tuesday or Thursday of next week uh, with mornings, afternoons work best for you? Yeah, probably something like Tuesday or Wednesday afternoon. I'd love to see whatever analysis and report you can create. That, that sounds like a good plan. Okay, perfect, perfect. I see that I have Wednesday available, let's say maybe around uh, Wednesday this time. Would that work yeah. for you? Yeah, that sounds great. Now, before okay. we do that, I, I just wanted to because we haven't had a, you know, a chance to talk, but you mentioned something that caught my attention. Okay. That for every dollar we put in, we want to get back four or $5. So provided I give you a thousand dollars a month, you can get me back four or $5,000 in customers. Right. right. I'm, you know what? I'm glad, I'm glad you brought that to my attention. And that's, that's something that we see, but this is not something that we can guarantee. What I was saying is, is that when you, when you have great advertising, you're gonna you're gonna see you should see some type of result. And one thing I can say is is that working with us, we we know that we'll be able to give you a result because what we do is we use data data driven metrics to bring about those positive changes in your advertising. Awesome. Can you give me a reference customer I can talk to? Absolutely. Um, I have a client by the name of. Uh, uh, let's see, Malcolm, wait, Eugene Oliver, where are you at? <laughs> and uh, as a matter of fact, I can pull him in right now. He may have some great things to say. <laughs> do you, but do you have a lighthouse? Do you have a, a reference? Yeah, I do. I actually do have a reference customer uh, by the name of McGee's uh, Patio Cafe. And they, okay. yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Well, good job. You did great. Okay. Everyone give him a hand. <laughs> Hey, let's have Kurt Williams come on. Hey, quick question. I'm sorry to interrupt real quick. I'm yeah. brand new at this. In regards to that, if somebody asks you for a reference, um, how does how do you wouldn't you want to avoid that if you're charging them different prices, but for the same thing? Because it might be I don't know how that works. You know. Um, so, you, so go back to the other trainings where we talk about having a package. You want to have package pricing because if you have to custom negotiate every single one of them, it's going to run into problems later, and you won't be able to scale. It's not to say you can't you can't customize the package based on how many locations, based on spend and what have you, but you do not want to offer negotiated pricing that that'll just get you into trouble. Okay. Sorry about that. Right. I think five weeks ago. Yeah. Okay. If you have a question, please put it inside the chat because the if we answer those questions now, then we're denying other people the opportunity to be able to role play. All right. How about Kurt Williams? Are you ready? Uh, hey Dennis. Hey, I want to see hey. you instead of the purple K. Um, the only problem, I still have the problem with my phone at the moment. Okay. So, um, yeah, I'm a little bit, I've had to kind of come into, I'm out in the country at the moment, actually. And I've just had to come down to the little hut here. So, yeah, it's a little bit strange, but yeah, um, I'm good. Right. Hi, how are you? <laughs> good. You know the drill? Yeah. So, um, uh, would you like to be the client or the agency? This is... You're in the driver's seat. Yeah, what's your lighthouse and do you want to be the client or the agency? Okay, so my lighthouse is New Age Entrepreneurs. And um, I'll, I'll, I'll probably go for the agency to be fair. Yeah. You'll be the agency? Okay, so yeah. who is a New Age Entrepreneur? What are they doing? How are they making money? Okay, so um, mine's actually more formulating New Age Entrepreneurs. Um, what I would like to essentially create are new age entrepreneurs that are going to be able to run their own digital agency or build multiple online income streams. But okay. ultimately in their down life is to essentially be um, sort of big movement changes. So essentially I'd like to combine with other people that have a, um, cause my ultimate mission for my life is to build a mental health organization in my later life after I've built my businesses that I could then 
one day, you know, sell and then go on to my afterlife and such. So, um, so movement makers are essentially the people that I ultimately want to be combining with, but essentially building people into being new age entrepreneurs like I have been over years. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You're the agency. So I'm going to play the example of a lead that came in just a couple hours ago to us. And I'll be Dennis and Kurt. I want to create a movement in Africa because I'm so inspired by what you've been talking about. And I want to train up a lot of young adults in my country to be certified digital marketers and then provide services to local businesses in my country. And okay. I love seeing the power of being able to connect with other people like you have done and you, the folks that you are working with. And I want to know what is that going to take for me? Because I have a big vision, but I have a small budget and I want okay. to know, can you help me? And is this something I can succeed in? So I would say to start off with, because you have a small budget, you're not going to be able to just go straight in to an enterprise like project where you're going to be able to build this huge movement straight away. That is something that you will be able to build to, but you want to get there in steps and stages. So I would say that the best bet for you at the moment is to ground yourself with some foundationalized training. So build yourself something that you can actually give to people, you know, build yourself a lead magnet, a training program, actually get someone under your wing and train them under something that you want to do. Get that first client, get that initial bit of training going and start to build your brand and start from there. Cause you can do that on a bit more of a budget yeah. and then you're starting the initial stepping stone. Okay. So how do I do that? So what do you know currently in digital marketing? What's your understanding? Like, where are you at? Like, do you have a lot of knowledge? Do you have, no knowledge whatsoever. Where, where are you on the spectrum? Uh, maybe a medium amount of knowledge. I mean, I follow the major blogs. I read Social Media Examiner, Digital Marketer. There's a lot of people I watch on YouTube, but I wouldn't okay. say I'm an expert, but certainly I've spent a lot of time studying it. Okay, well, that, that's good. So if I was to ask you, do you know of a strategy that you could use to either perform an action online, like sending a email campaign, setting up a social media schedule or setting up an advert? Or do you have a strategy of where you can create an income source through a means? So you know how to then create an ebook and publish that online. I have no idea because all these things cost a lot of money and these tools and the technology behind them are so tricky. So my hope is that you have experience here and you can tell me about it and maybe save me a bunch of time. And maybe I mean, we can win together and I'll, I'll give you a piece of the company even, right? Because you say that you're about mission-driven, long-term entrepreneurs. Maybe we could do something together. Well, I would absolutely love to. I'd actually, um, I'm forming a bit of a partnership and I actually um, would like to get a bit more of a inner circle for people that are long-term driven. You sound like someone who's well, long-term based and with the tools that I have available to me and the teams and the services and everything I have behind me, we have a very powerful resource to be able to help you build upon the stages to get to where your dream is. Okay. Now, if you're willing to put in the time, I would like to set up a strategy call to go through what stages can we go through? What's your preferred education? You know, what can we help you with? What videos can we set up for? What training? Who are yeah. you going to be giving after? And essentially build yeah. your knowledge to what you're going to be able to do. Does that so, sound good? That sounds fantastic. Can you tell me more specifically about how you've done that for yourself or for other clients? Okay. So over the years, um, obviously we had to get a lot of information and I came to the realization that with performing things with checklists and actually having walkthrough based training, I found it was much easier to then uh, do what we called, um, sorry, <laughs> uh, repeatable excellence. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> so once we have repeatable excellence fully in place and we're able to completely reciprocate a project or perform an action through a checklist, we, it's a much more viable way to run a business and also then teach people. So when we go through creating our own, <laughs> sorry, I'm reading a truck. <laughs> sorry. It's all right. <laughs> but, yeah, sorry. And I'm not actually, because I'm not with my notes, it's I'm trying to call everything off of mine because I've, I've got bullet pointed notes. Whenever I'm on a call or anything like that, yeah. or I'm speaking to someone or practicing, I have bullet points where I can just. Yeah, yeah, but you don't need like, that. Yes. 
yeah. If um, you're having to read bullet points, that means you don't know it well enough. Are you nervous? Yeah. <laughs> you nervous? Be Why are you nervous? Uh, because, you know, I know I'm speaking for a global organization. I'm kind of, you know, uh, a little bit on the spot. And it's, um, yeah, I mean, I was, because I'm not on video as well, I kind of, you know, I don't feel, yeah. But I, I mean, I'm happy in doing this, you know. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so here's my because advice. Because I'm, I'm not established in doing this. I find because I haven't got, you know, 10 or 100 clients under my belt, I haven't got the expertise and experience to be able to just fly this off like it's something that I've built subconsciously it's more of a conscious thought process yeah. so because that, that's still that I'm not quite perfect on going through the stages and steps so I do yeah. need to perfect this but I'm, I'm practicing so you have a little bit of what's called imposter syndrome or some people might call it Dunning-Kruger who's kind of the sister of that and when you have something so big and overarching and wanting to help new age entrepreneurs create mission-driven businesses you're going to encounter a lot of people who have no money and they're going to, we call them entrepreneurs, or some people call them free tarts, where they actually need a multi-million dollar budget and team, and they don't have any of this stuff in place. And their expectations are immediate returns because they'll say, look, if you can help me make money, then we'll reinvest in the first 10,000 we make, we'll put back into the company and we'll bootstrap it until we've got this billion dollar company. Those people almost never make it. And the other thing is that when you work with people who will make it, they have a plan and they can actually afford having you there because they know the cost of having people that are competent. So if you know what you're doing, someone like me, I might say, well, why would you work with a little guy like me? If you're already working with these companies that have been able to grow, tell me about some of these mission driven companies that, that you're working with in the process. And so by, by having a lighthouse that's proven out, like we have several lighthouses that are probably of the scale that you were trying to move to where they're making a few hundred million dollars a year. But because they are, they can pay some serious, serious cash and they have existing assets that we can optimize so that when we charge them $20,000 a month, which is one of the ones that I just closed this week, they don't even blink an eye. So you want to avoid people who have huge dreams that want to do worldwide. It's, it's sexy. It's, you know, it's, a, it's inspiring. And who doesn't want to be able to help people like that? But yeah. that means you're going to basically be working for free. And you're dealing with a lot of training and education that they're not, be, they're not going to be willing to pay for. And you're going to have to set up systems and teach them systems. So it's kind of the worst yeah. of both worlds because I mean, I do one thing that actually have a training. So I actually, what I currently have built are 25 training programs on digital marketing. I have 30 plus checklists as well, covering different digital marketing areas and aspects. I've got um, personal development training programs being developed at the moment as well. Okay. We've got agency training going on. That's so it's kind of like find, a be fair. Like to take people. Yeah, not, not <laughs> yeah. to be rude. Yeah. So I, I can go to Google and YouTube and find hundreds of checklists and all that. And the thing that's going to cause you to stand out and create authority is when you're teaching from your own example. Otherwise, you can just copy someone else's checklist and you might be able to be eloquent in repeating the items that are on there. But unless you're teaching from your example, you're not following what we call learn, do, and teach. Yes, so the which would be my weekly webinars. Um, What's that? So I've, got, I've got, so basically, what I've created is called what I call the digital foundation training. So it's very simple walkthrough and how to do type things online, just the how to do setups like an email service and yeah. very simple, basic things. And then we're going to be doing more high ticket strategies on a weekly uh, basis. So I'll do two webinars, like at least hour sessions or plus to actually go through proper high ticket strategies, like I'm um, setting up different income streams and things like that online and doing various different things. And then the high end top, so that you know, the top percent of the people that would then come through the service right. would eventually come to the partner and the long tier in a, in a circle sort of movement right. building side of things right. so we run masterminds and we power masterminds where these guys are charging 50k just to get into the mastermind and that requires a significant network an audience base content authority all these other pieces so my caution to you is get to the point where you're doing a hundred thousand dollars a month in running someone else's mastermind or high ticket program and then use them as a lighthouse to be able to track more business for you. That way you're going to get the right leads because there's no doubt based on the hard work that you put in, you can generate a lot of leads, 
but you want the right leads who are ready to spend $50,000, $100,000 with you and have the necessary ingredients. Otherwise, you're going to send them to the training. You're going to have these free consultation calls and you're not going to be able to sustain them. Like maybe you can charge a few hundred dollars for a power hour, but you're not going to be able to get to the point very easily of these folks spending fifty, hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars a month, right? Because anyone who is in that caliber, they're going to want to see that you have proof of this. Does that make sense? Yes, that does make sense. Awesome. Well, good job. You're you're tackling probably the most difficult of any of the verticals that any of us have here. It's even bigger than what I would even try to handle. So my hats off to you. It stems from my childhood and it stems from my life. So. Okay. Let's yeah. see. Who else do we have? Who is a partner? and wants to role play. Did we, let's see, David Brown. And we'll go on for a little bit longer. I know there's, there's, other, there's other folks that are here. I'm happy to stay on for another 20, 30 minutes, but if you guys need to run, that's totally fine. I'm here. All right. Okay. That, uh, that's not your real pool background, is it, huh? That's pretty awesome. Yeah, well, I, I can dream. <laughs> We're actually having a major thunderstorm where I am right now. Oh, wow. But, you know, makes me feel good to see that background. Okay, yeah. fantastic. So um, Lighthouse, as you know, is a uh, chiropractors and uh, would like to play the role of the agency. Okay. I may. Okay, so David, glad to meet. I'm a member of the Black Diamond Club. So of course, you know about uh, Sean Book and Lacey Dill. And I've seen that you're implementing a lot of these packages working with other folks who are trained and certified. And I just want to know, is this something that maybe you can help me with? I have been in, a, in my practice for two years and I have two other ladies that also are in, in my office. And we've, we've done some of the digital marketing kind of dabble, but we want to take it to the next level, but we're not really sure where to start. We're not good with video and technology and these kinds of things, but we're very willing to be coached. So what kind of programs do you have? Well, so um, if I understand correctly, you said two, two years you've been in business and that's wonderful. Um, what would be helpful to get started before I make any recommendations is to understand a little bit more about what your goals are, what you're trying to achieve. Yeah. Um, so I want to understand before, you know, I, we could recommend lots of programs uh, that you could do it yourself if yeah. you learn them, or yeah. um, we could do it for you. But uh -huh. before we jump ahead of ourselves, I'd love to understand a little bit more about what your situation is, what you've encountered in the first two years of your startup business, yeah. um, uh, and to understand what the issues are that you're finding. Uh, you say you've done some online work um, that could be advertising it could be social media marketing it could be uh, making sure that you're listed properly it could be a lot of things and we need to understand before we could be in a position to recommend anything specific to you what where you're at in each of these areas so it's kind of like it, it's best yep. to start out doing a needs assessment to figure out what your needs are before we make any recommendations. So what yeah. I like you, you asked the question already a minute ago, so you should let me answer it. Oh yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. No, you asked the question already, so, you, so don't try to pre-answer the question. Say, before we get started, you know, before I make any recommendations, I would like to understand what your goals are. And I would stop there, because you went on for another minute past that. Yes, I so did. Be careful of, of talking past, where, or if you're asking a question, be ready for the answer. Okay. Right? So that's good. So that's right. That was good of you to ask for the goals because that's where we're able to establish pain. So the last four months we've gotten hammered with coronavirus and we are a licensee of the specific, which you know, Sean Dill and, and Lacey Book have. And in the last two years, we've been able to get some business, but we wanted to grow more. And I've hired two other assistants in the office, but we only, we're only doing $30,000 a month. And it may be our location, and maybe because of marketing, and maybe, you know, who knows. But what I'd like to get is five new patients per week. Can you help me achieve that? Right. So um, what I would like to do is to figure out um, kind of what your uh, cost per lead is. 
and um, what it costs you to acquire a new patient. Um, and then we can design a program around how we can help you get there through using various digital marketing tools. Um, but I don't know what your, your cost per lead is right I, now. I don't know either, David. Or it's even how you're getting them. So what we'd like to do is to be able to help you establish that number um, okay. based on reviewing your data. Uh, is that something you think you'd be interested in pursuing with us? I guess we could, but let me ask you first, what should my cost per lead be? <laughs> well, it, you know, I, I don't know how to answer that question, honestly. Um, I know that's not a good answer here. <laughs> no, that, that is a good question. So by the way, for everyone listening here, never BS your words. Yeah. Okay? Even if you think you know more than the client, never lie to them. Never pretend that you have an answer. Never, like if they ask you, like let's say you're going after chiropractors and you don't have any chiropractic clients. Yeah. Don't lie and, and say that, that you do. Say, this is my specialty and I'm hoping to, to make you so happy that you become my lighthouse to all the other chiropractors. And I'm being completely transparent. This is my mission. This is what I've chosen. And I, I'm giving, I'm making it super clear why I have an incentive to do good work for you. And the same thing, if you don't know what the cost per lead is, don't, don't waffle and say, well, it depends on a lot of different factors, right? That's a nothing. Of course, it depends is always the answer to a question like that. You could say that we know that on average with paid media that a cost per lead is between 40 and $60 because depending on the region, the cost per click might be seven to $10 in urban areas. It might be 15 or 20 like New York City. And then your ability to convert that into a lead is based on your content. So even though we know that the cost per lead is generally 40 to $60, for you, it's going to vary because of the competitiveness of your area, because of how well your content works and because of the specific niches that you address in chiropractic. Because not all chiropractors are the same. So do you focus on the spine? Do you focus on working with personal injury attorneys for car accidents? Do you focus on migraines? Do you focus on, you know, what is the, neonatal, like infant care, what, what is it that you focus on? So these are things that would help determine what your cost per lead should be and what your cost per lead is. And therefore, when we analyze and figure out where your leads are coming from, of the leads that are, of the good leads that you're getting, how do we get more of those? Is it because of your reviews? Is it because of your location? Is it because you have informative one minute videos on social media? Those are all things that we want to determine and then figure out what it's going to cost to drive a lead. And then is that cost per lead going to be profitable for you based on your ability to close those leads to come in? Does that sound like a plan? Yeah, boy, if I could have only said that. <laughs> yeah, that's and excellent. it just takes practice, right? Yeah, it does, it does. That's, that's perfect. So that's you should perfect. mastermind with Dr. Jordan Bowen too. We've got a lot of folks who are serving chiropractors. Yep. I'm speaking at summer camp, which is the conference for Black Diamond Club. Yes, I know. 700 paying chiropractors in that group. Yeah. And we want to deliver as much value as possible. Put our training out there and those that can pay a few hundred dollars to get some of these basic things going, we can do a good thing for these folks and then move them on to monthly packages and bring on the Vendasta products, which work really well if you have the proper setup. Yeah. Dr. Uh, Dr. Jordan uh, is part of uh, my accountability group. We're together on that. So uh, it's, we're extremely lucky to have him as part of our group. He is fantastic. Yeah. And the, the more Jordans and John Cordray's and Shelley's and whatnot that we can have, the better, right? There's an amazing opportunity here. If you are, uh, let me know, by the way, in the chat, are you guys in an accountability group? Or maybe you don't know what that is. I want to know what you guys think about this. Heck yes. Okay, good. What do we got? Yes, yes, yes. Who is not? Okay, not yet. If you are not in an accountability group, I want you to go to the Facebook group and say, hey, I need to join an accountability group. And my lighthouse is dentists, mortgage brokers. Like You have to choose a group. If you don't choose an area, then you don't have other people to mastermind with. And at first thought, if you, for those of you who are not in a group, wow, I see a lot of you folks, then you you might think, well, why would, you know, if I'm serving chiropractors, then you know, Dr. Jordan's a competitor of mine, right? Why would I want to talk to him? No, there's so many chiropractors. There's so many dentists. There's so many real estate agents that 
we can collaborate together. It's not like, you know, I get a dentist and, but I think John, you just, you just said you got another dentist client or something, right? Or Dr. Jordan, you just got your first, a bunch of you guys got your first client this, this past week. Those are all great examples that we can learn from one another, right? There's more than just 10 real estate agents in, on the planet. There's more than just 10 dentists on the planet. There's tons and tons. Yeah, thanks, Anka, for sharing that link. So join there. All right, who else? We've got so many chats here. So thank you, David. Who thank else you. is a who else is a partner and has a lighthouse and wants to role play? Put it in the chat here. We'll take you guys first and then I'll continue on. We'll take a few more after that. Oh, Eric, real estate agents. All right, Mr. Hi. Eric. How do I say your last name? Nuwinski? Nuwinski, yep, that's Polish. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> cool. So real estate agents is a lighthouse and I will be the agency. Okay. So I am Dennis and I've gone through the training to get my license through Keller Williams and I serve Broomfield, Colorado. I've been doing this for six months and I have yet to sell a house. I've been trying to network as best I can. And you know, new real estate agents, most of them don't even sell any houses, right? Because anybody can, any mom basically is a real estate agent. So I'll just pretend I'm a 50 year old mom. My name is Denise. Okay, Denise. Still Colorado. And <laughs> Great. Great, Denise. You know, I, I have my license like a lot of other folks do, but I'm kind of scared of technology and I just want to sell houses. What do I need okay, to do? Denise. So I'll, I'll have to be upfront with you. Uh, if you have not sold a home yet, there is a lot of work to do, but uh, we could walk through this together, Denise. So number one, um, have you purchased a house before or has a friend purchased a house before? That you know a friend has okay and so do you, you know how that friend found their real estate agent it was through referrals through referrals exactly so one thing that i do here at my agency is i'm trying to help real estate agents drive word of mouth referrals and so by doing that there's a couple things that we can do um now of course you know the the landscape the the, the sales landscape of real estate looks a lot different than it did years and years ago. So word of mouth is now drive dr driven online. So uh, that's where we'll start with you, Denise, is, is we'll have to collect, we'll, since you, know, you haven't sold any houses before, you don't have word of mouth. So we do have a far way to go. Um, but there's a series of strategies and things and packages that I have to get you from not having any kind of personal brand to bring okay. you to the place where you can make that first home sale just by driving leads online. Okay. So what does that program look like? What does it cost? How long does it take? Okay. How do I so get leads? There, you know, that's the thing. I want leads. Everyone wants leads online, right? Yeah. Yeah. So there's a couple of things that we need to do. You starting off, you're, you're a special case, right? Because you're, you're just starting off. Like I said, um, we'll have to collect a couple of things. We'll have to collect your goals, content, and targeting. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll create an audit for you. Um, now your audit's going to look a little um, on the, on the F side in our, in our snapshot report, but I'm going to recommend with you on a power hour, we're going to sit down one one-on-one. -on -one. Um, okay. I'll show you what your area looks like for, like you said, you're in Colorado. Um, mm -hmm. And we'll build a plan where we're going to build your Facebook profile. We're going to build your three by three grid, your personal branding strategy. And we'll go into all that later, but uh, we'll start by first implementing the things to get your baseline as a real estate agent to get like the, to get the kind of first things in place to help grow evergreen content and, and deliver yeah. leads there. But we do yeah. have a lot of work to do from a uh, from word of mouth standpoint to get yeah. you selling homes. Wow, that sounds great. It sounds very clear. Eric, can you tell me about your experience working with other new real estate agents? Sure, so I'm here in the Chicagoland area. I work with real estate agents um, in this area. And typically my real estate agents are trying to break that six figures in commissions uh, like sales part. So what I do is I work with them one-on-one -on -one to create Facebook lead generation campaigns. Um, we'll yeah. promote specific listings, we'll drive leads, and I'll actually teach them and coach them how to close and follow up with those leads. Okay. So what's the program cost? And will, will I be a good fit? Will I succeed in your program? Yeah. So a couple of things, right? Like we'll, we'll, we'll be on the power hour, but I have two different packages. So my first package is just standard growth. That's 500 a month um, where I'll actually implement, you know, all of what I said, your, uh, your personal branding, your topic wheel, your three by three grid and do lead generation campaigns for you. 
Um, yeah. Now, if you're with a larger brokerage, like you said, you're with Keller Williams, yeah. um, we could always partner together with that and get you on a premium package for your whole brokerage. And that would help drive leads for your whole team. Okay. That sounds fantastic. What about things like advertising and email marketing and software and things like that? Yeah. So uh, how I work with my packages, I build them custom. So if there's something you want to add, like email marketing, um, I can offer all of those services as well. Um, but we start off with one of those packages I mentioned, and then we can build and custom tweak things to your liking. Fantastic. Wow. How are you able to do all that as one guy? <laughs> well, I've got a great team behind me. <laughs> uh, and I work with, um, I work with a great team. And so it, it, it is just me. I'm the figurehead of, of my company. Um, but I have a team behind me that handles a lot of the fulfillment. Yeah. Awesome, Eric. Well, I'm looking forward to getting started with you. Congratulations. I'm excited so to talk job. to you. Yeah. Do you guys see how well Eric did? Notice what he did where he asked specific questions. He reflected back details that I had mentioned because he was listening very carefully. And he was able to teach me in an interactive way the importance of referrals. And he also anchored success by talking about his six-figure agents that he's able to coach as well as at the brokerage level where he has a premium product and a base product. So great job there. That's great. Great. Thanks, Dennis. Okay. So everyone should be like that. And by the way, you don't have to be super well-spoken. You don't have to have perfect English. You just have, cl have clarity in your process and be able to have empathetic active listening to reflect back because I'm always going to throw you a couple details. See if you can reflect those things back. Okay, so who else do we have? Who is, okay, is it Anas Najibi? Are you there? Yes, Anas. Anas, how are yeah. you? Good, thank you, how are you? Good. Perfect. Yeah, so my lighthouse is uh, real estate, uh, as uh, Eric, huh? <laughs> and uh, yeah, I can play the, the agency to try okay. to check how I'm doing. So, Anis, what makes you qualified to help real estate agents? Uh, so, uh, our agency exists uh, since 2010. Uh, so, we have 10 years of experience in marketing. Uh, we just arrived here in Florida. We helped some uh, real estate agent and some landscape uh, company. So, we want just to share our experience and uh, be helpful. Awesome. Well, I run a brokerage in Fort Lauderdale really? and I have six other agents and you know, I, this is my office. So I'm the broker dealer and you know, things have been really hard as you can imagine the last few months, okay. but we see that in certain markets, things are, are doing well, like in, in the mid market. So what is it that, what can you do to help us sell more homes to help our agents be able to drive more leads or help us drive more leads on behalf of our agents. Perfect. So uh, you told me that you have already six um, branches and it means that you are in the business since a long time and yes. you already have uh, for sure uh, uh, a marketing strategy and marketing presence. Yeah. So um, the first thing uh, is we have to check what you have, uh, your um, digital infrastructure yeah. and uh, after uh, we can do uh, an audit to yeah. check uh, your situation and yeah. see what can we improve. And uh, uh, I'm sure that uh, we, can, we can find great solutions for you, especially okay. here in Florida, it moves all the yeah. time. <laughs> so I have, I have a couple of ladies on my marketing team. Do you work well with in-house or, or do you coach or how, what are your programs look like? So we have uh, three uh, formal of uh, three packet packages. We have do it for me, do it together, or do it for me. If you uh -huh. have already your team uh, on on site, uh, we can work together, and this is a great uh, solution because we can all grow in in competence, and uh, we can provide you with with uh, uh, all the tools that you need. Or if you want, uh, it depends on the the proposition that you will choose. We can do all the job for you. And your team will just uh, make uh, the, the the regular marketing uh, going. Okay. Can you send me a brochure that covers those three options? Done for you, done with me, and what happens? Absolutely, absolutely. Done for you. Have okay. Yeah. All right. So we in in Fort Lauderdale, we have a large Hispanic Latino market, 
Absolutely. And that's where we've specialized in. Mm -hmm. And are you able to handle that? Absolutely. So in our agency, we speak uh, four languages. So uh, Spanish and Portuguese in the area of uh, Pompano Beach, uh, we can handle this with great pleasure. Yeah. Absolutely. Fantastic. Can you share the examples of ads that you've run in Spanish? Absolutely. We can uh, give you an example of a client of, uh, in, in Fort Lauderdale too. So it's uh, a landscape company and we did two campaigns, one in uh, English and uh, in Spanish too. Fantastic. How many languages do you speak? Four. French, English, Portuguese, and Spanish? No, uh, and Arabic and a little oh, bit Arabic. Spanish. Right. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh, I should know by the last name. Yeah, great job. <laughs> Good job. I give you an A. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> who, who else do we have here? And everyone, if you've taken off, that's totally cool. Enjoy the fourth. I think we'll take maybe one or two more. You don't have to stay, but it's a great learning opportunity. There's certainly something about doing it live versus watching. It really tests your skills. And by the way, don't feel bad if you didn't do well in the role play. This is the kind of thing it just takes a lot of experience, right? All right, so let me know in the chat who else is a partner and wants to role play. If you haven't had that, otherwise we're going to start taking folks who are not Zendaster partners yet. Okay. Angelica. You like the camera? Isn't that cool? We got these three, three cameras. Very cool. I strive to be <laughs> like I you. I like the background too. Mine's real though, is it? Is yours I real? I want to, you're inspiring me. I need to make mine more like representing my company this is just like a obviously a stock photo yeah get some more light on you too i know i'm working on my light i've been working on my audio so lighting's next i just got some soundproof curtains in here so good job love that all right um so my lighthouse is real estate agents um but i would like to be the realtor since you already did the agent okay i'll be you the, want to be the realtor so yes. you, you came to me because you saw some content that we produced for Tom Ferry or Justin Martin or maybe Chris Scott because you're in one of these groups. Hi, uh, I love all of your marketing online and I've, I've had my license for like a year okay. and I, I, am, I network a lot with the local real estate agents because I know that's super important to have a network. But uh -huh. as far as my... Um, and I'm, and I have a background in marketing, so I, I have my Facebook page set up okay. and, um, you know, I've done that, but I put some money into some Google ads and I haven't really gotten any calls from it and the leads that I'm getting aren't really good. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong okay. and I don't want to keep throwing money away. And I, I, I hear you're, you're great at getting leads and um, qualified leads. That's, that's the main issue is the qualification of the leads that I'm getting through my ads. How can you help me? Okay. So Angelica, you're in the right place. So you tell me you're a relatively new real estate agent. You've spent some money on Google ads. It didn't generate leads for you. Well, we're in the business of measuring what's working and what isn't working. And we've done this enough times that it is pretty easy to troubleshoot what's going on. So would you like to talk generally right now about what some of these issues are to troubleshoot or maybe if you give us access to Google Analytics and Google Ads and to your Facebook page, you said you did a little bit of Facebook, we could actually pinpoint which one, or what the issue is. Would you, which way would you like to go? I'd love for you to look at my Facebook ads. I know I, I mentioned we are doing Google search ads and we have like a call tracker. Uh -huh. um, even though it's, I'm not really sure how the call tracker works. So Okay. The Facebook, I understand a lot more because I can see the lead forms and, and the answers that are being submitted, but all of those people that we followed up with, they're just like not relevant people. It's just like, I don't know if they're spam or okay. who's entering their email addresses because okay. they're not really interested in the house and we're getting a ton of them. So okay. the leads are just really bad. So yeah, I'd love for you to look at the Facebook. Okay, good. Well, we have a process. It's six phases where we're gonna audit your business and specifically focus on what you're doing with Facebook. And we'll find, because we've done this a lot of times, that what you do with Facebook tends to be more top of the funnel and awareness. And if you try to drive those straight to a lead form, you might 
find that they're lower quality. So you get tons yeah. and tons of these cheap, unqualified leads, right? Yes. But the ones that become good customers, you actually have to qualify and nurture them. So they understand who you are, what you do, and the kinds of services you offer and how you're different than the other real estate agents in your area. And when you're able to qualify, then the leads that come through are gonna be higher quality and they already know a lot about who you are. So if anything, your lead gen is too effective because you're asking for their information and phone number before they're actually ready to talk to somebody. True. And so that doesn't value your time. Yeah. The other thing is that when you do a good job, what area are you in again? I'm in Southern California. Um, Where in Southern Long California? Beach, California, Long Beach. Where? Long Beach, LA County. Long Beach, oh, fantastic. My mom's actually in Harbor City, not very far oh, really? at all. That's yeah, I ran the Long Beach right by, uh, a few years ago. <laughs> Very farm. <laughs> I was actually in Long Beach last week and I wanted to take the ferry over to Catalina, but a lot of the services got shut down. You were here in Long Beach? Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> I'll be in Phoenix next week, but I know you said you're going to be in LA this week. Yeah, we're filming a full day with Jake Paul. You know who Jake Paul is. I and do. At that level. Yeah, building courses, you can imagine. But back to your funnel, when you do a good job in Long Beach and in the, the harbor cities in the Bay Area, that's gonna drive more people searching for your name, more people searching for branded search terms. So your, your Google results are gonna do a lot better when you do a good job in awareness. And you understand, right, Angelica, how when people have heard of you before and they get a sense of your personality, they get a sense of your stories and what you care about, when they do a search for, you know, buy a home in Long Beach or Gardena or other areas, when they're gonna choose the agent that they've seen content with, where they're more familiar, right? So oh, I kind of threw a bunch of money really quickly for this really uh, a high end luxury listing that I got. And okay. the seller was on me to like sell this listing fast. Right. And that's kind of what prompted the quick ad. And you're right, I yeah. haven't been doing a more thought out strategy um so that's a good point yeah are you a member of of one of the groups like chris scott with paperless agent so you have your listings presentation uh yes yes i do okay. i do follow them i have a listing right. presentation um but i think i was just trying to get some quick buyers for my anxious seller okay we well, just need to run ads against that because what's a listings presentation and what is a presentation of of your agency if no one sees it. So if you're yeah. using social media the right way, then that's how you're going to be able to attract buyers for your seller and get that quick win. But it's not you know, magic. It requires building reputation and requires optimizing. So I'm looking forward to taking a look at your analytics and seeing what's working, what isn't, because I can pretty much guarantee you we can pinpoint where you're wasting money and where you're not getting conversions or where you're getting bad leads like you mentioned. How does that sound? That sounds great. Awesome. Okay. Now you see how we're not, we're, we're not recommending any packages at this point because mm. there could be agents that have unrealistic expectations where they think that if they spend a hundred dollars a month, they're going to get 10 great leads per, per week or something exactly. like that. That's just unreasonable. So we always, before we get to that point, especially in real estate, or where there's professional services, we want to do an audit and see what's going on. Most of the time, when people say that they've run a lot of Google ads or Facebook ads, their content is bad. Like 90% of the time, it's their content's bad because they're not using video and they don't know how to structure a three by three. But you're not going to tell them that yet, even though you already know that's the answer, because you want a chance to look at it and walk them through it, go through the analysis. And then when you make the recommendation, they're definitely going to buy. Awesome. Yes. All right. Thank you. Well, good job, Angelica. Pequeño, that means small, right? Yeah. Little angel. Oh, little angel. That's awesome. All right. Anyone else? <laughs> he says, I'm not, I'm not rushing to sell. Yeah, you never, if you ever are, if they ever feel like you're pressuring to sell, that's just a bad situation. It needs to be comfortable, needs to be friendly. That's why active listening is so important. All right. Maybe you'll take one more. Real quick, we'll take, we'll take a couple more. Put your, put who you are in the chat, if you're a partner or not, what your lighthouse is. Oh, Carlos, there you are. Hi, right, Mr. Carlos. Hi, how are you? There, still there? 
Yes, can you hear me okay? Yep. Sorry for the camera. Speak up a little bit. I, it's hard for me to hear you. Uh, the, the camera is messed up too. I, okay. I, I kind of like the way it looks, but I apologize. Um, you look like Max Headroom with those green lines. You guys, you guys remember Max Headroom in the 90s? I do, I do. I'm a little older than you, I think. <laughs> so, really? I'm 45. How old are you? I'm 49. Oh, okay. We're the same age. Uh, we're about that same. Same time frame, right? There you go. All right. So um, I wanted to play maybe, uh, you know, uh, let's say, for, for example, my wife's a, a, a medical doctor. So she's, you know, she's uh, one of the reasons I kind of got involved in the business is because of her, you know, some of the challenges of, of the medical provider this day and age, right? So it's a primary care practice. So, okay. you know, it's uh, every year you get a little less from the insurance companies. Uh, yeah. they, you got to hire the nurse practitioners. They got to yeah. take care of them. They want a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, they really don't have much of a budget, even though everyone thinks they have tons of money laying around. Um, and so, you know, I, I would like to see how, how, I don't know if you want me to be the, I'd rather probably, I, I could be probably a much better uh, a client and see okay. how you approach that since that's one of my uh, areas that I'm looking to concentrate just because of the proximity and social, you know, situation. Yeah. So you as a client, what are you doing to generate more patients given the pressure from the insurance companies, coronavirus, so, people don't want to come in, right? Telemedicine. Yeah. So, so basically I've been busy this last couple of months. I basically started being, became a partner because I needed to do this for her. Um, and so uh, we've, we've launched telemedicine. Um, for the longest time, you know, obviously she, she had been kind of running just uh, getting clients or in this case leads based on really the insurance companies, um, you know, that they, uh, they basically always funnel your, your patients. So you really don't have a humongous need to get clients in that respect or patients, let's say. But okay. uh, we had seen, you know, there's, there's been obviously a yearly dip and so on and so forth. So, and, and we were behind the times in terms of social media. So we we kind of got into, uh, you know, kind of been following you. And so a lot of the organic growth, uh, I have been putting some uh, click ad uh, and, 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 and just organic growth and okay. a, a little bit of Google. Uh, you know, we learned about Google My Business. So we, uh, we've, we've grown all that. All that stuff is, is, is in the works and it's moving and, and so on and so forth. But as you want to ramp up and grow now, specifically through social media, now that presents a challenge for me how to uh -huh. take it to the next level, um, you know, start looking. I talked to Mike Lawson already uh, okay. as far as learning how to, how to do maybe uh, some of the click ad campaigns and such. But um, so, so I guess I'm not role playing at this point. I'm just sharing. <laughs> so, so uh, but that's, that's so what's the issue, one. Carlos? Okay. Well, the issue is I don't know how to, how to ramp up as far as how much of a budget at this point to, uh, to throw at it. Uh, you know, the, the money's not really there, especially with the situation. And then, you know, we're, we're both in Arizona, so we okay. know that we could be shutting down. Again. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so uh, I don't know how to navigate the next two, three months, let's say. Uh, do, do we, for example, we have a couple of, uh, a couple of ancillary type services. We do allergy shots. We do, um, um, uh, also, uh, fat content analysis, for example, is another ancillary thing that we kind of offer to, to okay. fitness, fitness minded type people. So we want to, we want to launch that into, um, okay. next level. We want to get leads. We want people to just knock on the door, right? Because, because traditionally we only get people through insurance companies, you know, that right. the doctor. so that's a, new, a, it's a, a whole new level of, of marketing that we're not familiar with. So we want yeah. you to help us with that. <laughs> yeah. Not just sick care. Exactly. People who want to perform better, you know, athletes right. and people who are doing sports or professionals and whatnot. Exactly. So are, are you doing things like, um, shoot, I even forgot the names of these different sorts of services. You know, where they do like the stem cell injections. And We're looking at it. So that, that, that's a, uh, there's a whole lot of other things out there then based on how, you know, we, we start growing things. I think that's that. There's a lot of uh, yeah. possibilities. Out but there, the fat right? analysis or things with physiology. Are, have you made videos around each Not of yet. the options that you have? We are just starting to. We we have. Uh, I mean, it's all brand new, and then all this uh, with the telemedicine. We've we've only had so much time to do such. But so I've been trying to plan that ahead. But uh, um, that's definitely in the works. The videos are definitely in the works. We did do like a 3D virtual tour and try to put some tags on it through the through yeah. the NASA platform. Uh, yeah, so you can, can see, you know, like navigate and feel a little bit more comfortable coming in. 
you know, so we're slowly growing, but I guess the question would be is, so how do we, how do we tackle the ads without throwing, you know, thousand dollars down the drain? You know, if you, <laughs> if, if you just, you know, I, I already threw a few hundred dollars at Google in the past. So and I, well, I got a lot better now, but. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to throw money down the drain. Well, the trouble with testing is that you're guaranteed to throw away money. So you want to throw away as little as possible, which means Correct. you learn as fast as you can. We are doing dollar a day uh, right. for sure. And so that's, that's going well. Um, but it sounds like you're on the right path. I think so so. You, you know about Vendasta, you know about yes. dollar a day, the three by three grid. So you can start to learn and how to drive leads and turn those leads into people that come into your practice, into your clinic and look at the lifetime value of these customers based on what procedure they're coming in on. So everything you're saying sounds good and it sounds like you're busy trying to get it done. So what can I do that? I don't know. I just thought I'd be a, 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 a pesky uh, doctor and see what, if you want to role play that way. Well, <laughs> you as a doctor, if you, if you come into the emergency room and me as the attending physician says, what's the issue? And you say, well, I'm not really sure. I'll say, well, that's great. You don't need to be here in the waiting room, the emergency room, right? If you have a clear need, if you want our help, we can certainly help implement. If you want us to oversee or consult, we can do that as well. Good point. Good point. If you want our training, I'll give you our training. If you're already in the Vendasta group, you can see the training we have and how thousands of other agencies are implementing it and businesses directly are, are implementing it. Yes. But you, right. you have to have a clear need. If you don't have a clear need, I'm not going to try to suggest anything. Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Awesome. Thanks, Anas. All right, guys. I think we are now at an hour 40, 41, so almost two hours, and you guys are still here. Maybe we'll take one more, and then we'll wrap it up. Let's see, who do we have? Maybe Kosi, I think you've mentioned yourself a couple times. Hey, Dennis. Hey, Hi. lots of postings in the group. Keep yeah. it up. Uh, give me one minute, please. And while he's, while he's getting ready, our team's in working. All right. Hi. Hey, Dennis. Hey, how are you doing? I'm good. Get a webcam. Get a nice webcam. Uh, do I? Well, uh, okay. <laughs> like this? Yeah. Like well, I'm trying to, to uh, upgrade though. So. <laughs> you see this one that's going back and forth? Isn't that kind of cool? Well, yeah. Actually, that's you know what? Uh, when I scale my agency to seven uh, figures, that's what I'm going to buy. There you go. Seven so. figures, $83,333 a month. That's so. doable. Yep. That's Eight doable. Months clients that pay you $10,000 a month and you're there. Eight clients that pay 10,000. Okay. That's doable. Uh, give me two years. Okay. That's great. Yeah. Seven figure business. Who, who, who wouldn't want that? That's great. Uh, give me two years. All right. So, uh, my lighthouse is a uh, restaurant. Okay. Um, and I'm in the process of rebuilding my website. Uh, I have a couple of, uh, well, actually, I have three packages that I'm not really, really clear on yet, but okay. I kind of have an idea of what I'm going to um, offer. So, Okay. And just real quick, before we go into the role play, mm -hmm. how much are you doing in sales and how well are you doing against your lighthouse restaurants? Uh, pretty good because, you know, I, I actually have a, a pretty solid uh, experience with a restaurant. As a student, I used to work in a restaurant for four years, so I know how that works from the inside. And right now, I've been uh, helping a friend of mine who owns a restaurant. I've been running ads and chatbots for her. It's been yeah. probably yeah. a year and a half now. So, yeah. And they're a good lighthouse? Yeah. In what way? I'm sorry, what? The restaurants? Well, this, this friend who runs a restaurant, you're saying they're a lighthouse for you? Yeah. Okay. Have you documented it? Well, not yet. Actually, I'm going through your uh, training uh, step by step by step. So I'm not in a rush yet, but my goal is to get it done. So, so if you want to get more restaurants, you need to document your success because we teach from example where we've okay. successfully implemented something over and over again. So do that with your friend, do that with whoever else that is willing to allow you to document and interview them, mm -hmm. especially with things being so difficult right now with COVID-19. And you show techniques such as Every day, tell everyone that you're open. Make a video, right? That's what they do. Post all the different social medias. Boost some of these items. 
say thank you to your best customers, go behind the scenes on the employees. Claim your Google My Business and make sure it's up to date and you update the hours so it doesn't say COVID-19 warning, this place might not be open. Update your website so it runs quickly. Other things that you see inside the Vendasta snapshot report. You show how you've gone through all those items, publish that as a guide to a 30 minute webinar or video showing how you've gone through those different items, ideally with that restaurant owner agreeing that how important it is and showing what the results of it has been by implementing those. Does that make sense? Yeah, perfect, okay. That's what you need to do. Okay, what's for me? All right, quick role play and then we gotta run because we're almost two hours. You guys are crazy patient, my goodness. <laughs> by the way, we're gonna do office hours where we're gonna focus just on Q&A, where you bring your ad issues, we can do role playing, we'll look at your landing pages, I'll even help you close some of these deals. Like I'll even come in on some of the calls. If you've lined up a call, if you have everything lined up properly, I'll come in and help you close the deal. So that's something we're, we're going to release hopefully in a couple of weeks. I know Alex and Callista and the other team members have worked really hard on that. Okay, so you ready? Are you gonna be the restaurant owner or the agency? No, I'm gonna be the uh, agency. The agency, okay. Yep. So what kind of restaurant do I have? Uh, independent uh, restaurants, neighborhood uh, restaurants, uh, medium to large size uh, restaurants. Okay. So I have a, I have a Papa Do. Mm -hmm. Higher end restaurant. We do about 2.5 million per year, primarily with seafood. And we draw from the well-to-do neighborhoods, of course, because our average ticket is $83. And okay come in because they're celebrating a special occasion because they can get seafood or steak anywhere else but okay. they come to Papa Do's because it's a premium experience and we have great service you can look at our reviews this is this is not Outback Steakhouse right but we found that because we're premium people don't want to pay $83 for takeout right so we're having to reconfigure the menu for delivery and get better word of mouth, better SEO. But I think we need a little bit of help to make sure we're doing that right. Sure, okay. So um, let me ask you this though. Um, uh, when uh, uh, you actually um, open your restaurant? Okay, so first off, I, I gave you some background. And before you come in with a question, you need to reflect back some level of understanding or empathy of what I okay. said. Okay. Right? So let's try that again. So, okay, so I told you about my restaurant. Now it's your turn. Okay. Yeah, so hey, uh, Dennis, that, that was some great uh, info on your restaurant though. And uh, what you just um, um, talked about is something that I saw with a lot of uh, restaurant owners, actually how uh, COVID-19 impacted their sales and how a lot of them actually had to uh, switch from uh, in-house um, dining to um, delivery. Yeah. So that's a trend we've been actually uh, seeing more and more. And at this point, it's more like a question of life or death for um, restaurants. Because at this point, if you can't be online, you're probably going to have to close. And I'm not sure yeah. if you've seen the statistics uh, lately, but uh, what I read is that 85% of restaurants that are not online might close by the end of this year. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think you probably got the right idea to uh, kind of switch to um, delivery. But the question is, do you actually have the right system or do you, uh, do you even have a, have a proven system for that? I don't know. I mean, uh, or Dash and Uber Eats, right? <laughs> delivery system and well, we're at their mercy. Okay, well, so the thing is this, you know, the fundamentals of running a restaurant business are not gonna change. It's always about uh, selling food to people, right? But the way you sell food, though, is going to change, you know? So uh, it's not going to be like a major shift. It's more like a, uh, it's, it's more like a uh, smaller size tweak. So we actually have to find uh, people that will come to your restaurant and pick up food as opposed to a Syrian uh, eat, right? So... Yeah. Um, yeah. What we might do for this is uh, I'll take a look at your social media uh, presence, you know, mm -hmm. uh, how much you uh, post, what type of uh, content you advertise, that type of, of stuff. 
and then uh, from there we can um, talk again and I'll show you exactly uh, what I can do to help you with your uh, delivery um, options. Okay, fantastic. I'm excited to get started. I'll tell you one thing here, if you're closing a client and they're a higher end client like Glenn Bo yeah. talked about, they are absolutely going to nail you for your appearance. Oh, if I? They're going to nail you on your appearance. You, you need to have a professional looking setup. Well, yeah, I mean, in the yeah. studio, but if you're doing the webcam thing and mm -hmm. it, it, and someone's going to trust you with their business, yeah. especially if they're, if they're a dentist or a doctor, or if they're a high-end restaurant, they're going to want to know that you appear to be professional. Right? Okay, so which means like a suit and tie, nicer a background. Oh, that, that type of I'm, I'm wearing a t-shirt, okay. but it's well lit. The, the video is good. Obviously, my thing fell apart a little earlier because we moved. We, we made some changes in the studio, mm -hmm. but little things like that. Did you see the episode we had with Glenn Vo? I think it was five issues ago. Uh, I'm not sure. I think I missed uh, that one. Watch, watch that one. Everything okay. you're saying is good. Just mm -hmm. improve upon the appearance that you have. Okay. That'll that'll make all the difference. Okay. Good job, Kosi. Perfect. All right. Okay, yeah, everybody. Thanks. This okay. has been our longest Conquer Local Think Tank session so far. You guys are troopers. Man, fantastic. You know, for those of us that are still here, this means that you're dedicated to growing your agency. And I'm dedicated to growing your agency. And Vendasta is here. We're all in the same boat. I know a lot of people say, oh, we're in this together. No, we really are. Like, we're really here. So I want to see you post your progress inside the group. I want to see the wins that you have. I love sending out t-shirts. It takes a lot of time, but I look at all of the progress you have. If you're not part of an accountability group, then please join one because you need to have other people that are holding you accountable. Don't just come to this weekly call in the same way you go to church on Sunday or whatever your practice is. You need to be living, breathing, eating, and sleeping this. So I want to see you guys succeed. If you are not part of the Vendasta program where you're buying in on one of the tiers that start at $50 a month, I would encourage you to check that out. If you're not ready because you don't have the cash, that's totally fine too. Learn how to build and bootstrap your agency. And then from your first client, you can invest in the platform because that's how you're going to be able to retain clients. What we did today is a role play. You're going to get more examples of this when we launch our office hours and we'll be able to address everyone that comes through. If you submit your questions, and follow the protocol that we have. There's other people that are gonna help as well beyond just me, although I'm you know, one person. But I wanna see you guys win. I hope you have a good fourth. And next week, we're gonna talk about certification. And when you're a certified partner, think about all the amazing things that are gonna be available to you where we're helping you close deals. You can tell everyone that you have a badge. You can print out books. There's other services that we're gonna provide for you that are beyond what you're able to get in the webinars that you're seeing for free. So if you are coming in on this on the replay, I hope you enjoy all the items that we've been talking about. I hope you learn from our other agency partners who have bravely volunteered their business to potentially embarrass themselves in front of everyone here, right? So that we can all learn. Because if you, you don't know how to close deals, if you don't know how to operate, you don't know how to build your sales and marketing, you're not gonna be successful as a long-term agency. And that's why all of us are here. So thank you guys very, very much. And I'd love to see your questions and feedback and successes in the group. And if you're in the United States, I hope you have a happy 4th of July. Great spending time with you guys. Thank you so much.